Every great rivalry has stories, and Calvin and Hope are no different. Our first story comes from 1917. Hope College had a basketball team. Calvin did not. So a group of Calvin students formed a squad to go play Hope. The Flying Dutchman beat them soundly, and those same Calvin students returned to campus defeated, in trouble with the administration, and partially responsible for starting one of the greatest college basketball rivalries in NCAA history. Point one again to the Belt House. He's going to try to go the same way. He's got a three. Oh! Calvin on top for the first time tonight. The freshman. Are you kidding me? Rivals is presented by Cunningham Dolman. Let us help you, and we will earn your trust. Calvin College, minds in the making. The Bootsima, Sitsima, and Van Wingerden Group at Morgan Stanley. And the Oaks Agency, Inc., serving the insurance needs of West Michigan families and businesses since 1903. Hello and welcome to another edition of State Champs Rivals. I'm your host, Lauren Plant. College basketball has some fantastic rivalries. Duke, North Carolina, Louisville versus Kentucky, Michigan, Michigan State. Pop quiz. In 2005, ESPN put out what they feel are the top five rivalries in college basketball. The fourth greatest rivalry in the nation, Division III's Hope College versus Calvin College. These two schools have battled it out on the hardwood for almost a century. Do you know what the average point difference is over the course of 93 years? just over a half a point per game. The history of this rivalry has deep geographical and theological roots and has shaped what Calvin versus Hope is today. The series started in uh, the 1920-21 school year and uh, it pretty much has gone uninterrupted, uh, interrupted a couple times by national events, uh, the world wars, a couple times where the rivalry became a little bit too heated and it was just kind of called off for a couple of years. But uh, uh, by and large, it's been a continuous uh, rivalry now coming on, uh, well, 187 games. Hope actually had gotten the jump on um, adding varsity athletics to its offerings. Uh, I want to say in the very late 19th century where Calvin was a little slow to come along and hope it started to make some noise with its uh, athletics teams. 
um, had a good basketball team, and Kelvin wanted to kind of match that. That's kind of how the ball got rolling, and uh, Kelvin was kind of playing catch up there for a while, and uh, when you're trying to catch up, it kind of creates a little bit of a, an edge, and that got the rivalry going. And the Christian Reformed Church and the Reformed Church of America split many years ago, and uh, that has become a dynamic. So you have very close games, you have proximity, you have religious theological differences, and that is the makings for a really great rivalry, and it has been that for a long, long time. I would compare it to March Madness in terms of that regular season fervor and excitement um, for, you know, for a Division III. Uh, it's definitely not small in stature at all. It's big time. Like, you're just kind of like, this is big time. And I mean, the band, the people, it's packed. It's business, it's community, it's schools, it's friends, it's brothers, it's sisters, it's grandpas and grandmas, and it's faith. The rivalry started to build in the 1920s, and uh, Kelvin's uh, coach, as they got into the late 20s, early 30s, was Albert Meiskins. And, I heard lots of stories about how he'd get so nervous that with three, four minutes left in the game, he'd just kind of duck out and go into the locker room and let his team play without a coach because the pressure was so high. As Hope and Calvin moved into the 50s and 60s, some iconic names began their playing days for the Flying Dutchman. Players like Paul Benes, Ray Ritzema, and the great Floyd Brady. I can't imagine a better Division III basketball player than Floyd Brady. Floyd um, is a terrific jumper. Terrific athlete. Um, I would I would say he certainly is one of, if not the best basketball player ever to, to play at Hope College. He really controlled the game. An outstanding player. I would put him right at the top of uh, the list of, of, of my favorite all-time uh, players. Uh, there was no postseason back then. There was a, a ban by the league on um, NCAA postseason play. So to score 2,000 points in a season where you only played 20 games was pretty remarkable. Another outstanding athlete to come out of that era was Glenn Van Weeren, a feisty forward who would later cement his name in history not as a player, but as coach. 33 years he held the reins at Hope, a career that churned out over 600 wins. Van Weeren is quite simply the greatest coach in Hope College history. I always wanted to sit across from him so I could watch him. Uh, coach and watch his level of intensity so I could call him up after the games and we chatted every night after a game. He really had a level of intensity that, that I think made him a really good coach. For folks that know Glenn, he's got a lot of energy um, and when it came time to play Kelvin, that energy level went up tenfold um, and you know he was doing circles, chasing his tail even more than what he normally does. Sorry coach. Um, but yeah, he, he just uh, uh, he cranked it up and it was it was a big big game for him as well as the whole campus. He grew up with it more so than I did. I mean it was in his blood from the get-go from when he was a young boy until he ended co his coaching. It's still in his blood for heaven's sake. As the 1970s began, the momentum swung in Calvin's favor and the night's success due in large part to a six foot ten inch left-hander Mark Veenstra. A surefire Division I recruit out of high school Veenstra spurned those scholarship offers to attend Calvin. In return, the Knights pulled off the longest winning streak in this historic rivalry. Mark was the coolest customer around. Uh, the rivalry didn't phase him. Um, he was not an extremely expressive or uh, emotive guy, but he, uh, uh, he would take the game fairly in in order. I mean, he didn't get really excited about it. He would just go in there, do his work, and uh, walk off the court. And it was always with a win when I was there. <laughs> That's probably an era that Hope fans would like to forget, as Kelvin won 22 straight games. In fact, won every game of that decade. So, uh, although many of those games, if you look at the scores, went right down to the wire. A um, couple of games where Kelvin won in the last second. So it wasn't like Kelvin was blowing Hope out by 20 plus points. They just had a way of uh, winning those games back in the 1970s. When you go to a Hope Calvin uh, game, uh, there's as much conversation that after the game, the next day in the churches, uh, in the community. And you know, when you think of 22 consecutive uh, Hope losses, uh, very, very agonizing uh, time, uh, especially uh, here in Holland for Hope fans. In 1980, Hope was the operative word for the Dutchman. Enter Matt Neal, an athletic forward from Hamilton who helped Hope end the streak and begin one of their own. 
as a sophomore, we were pretty focused on just trying to get one game, get 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 a win, and we we named it the Day of the Dutchman when we finally did beat Calvin on February 6 of 1980 um, at the Civic Center. Coach Van Weeren had turned it around there a little bit after the decade with the Veenstras, uh, with Mark Veenstra and the Capels and all those, and we were getting it handed to us pretty good. And of course, that was tough for a little kid because you'd always come home and Dad, you lost again. And, and Calvin lost again, and then at school, the kids knew I was the, you know, the coach's uh, kid, and so they would always kind of pick on me about how Hope beat us again, because that was the only game on TV, so uh, that was the only game that most kids even paid attention to. There's just so much overlap in the community, so you get a Dikema who went to Grand Rapids Christian with a Jimmy Clunder, and, and those guys played together with a guard tandem there, and all of a sudden they're competing against each other. You know, neither team was leaving anything, um, anything out from those games. You'd put it all out on the floor and um, and you'd be surprised sometimes at the outcomes and what happened in those. The late 80s and early 90s featured some of the greatest teams either school has ever produced. The results were some classic confrontations that included the Knights stealing a couple of rare victories in the Holland Civic Center. We benefit when both teams are good and we're even better when both teams are very good because that's really when I think people come together and are, are pretty fired up and, and you see it at its finest. I remember Coach Dama saying we hadn't won there since the Ford administration and one of Coach Dama's things, we took, we sent the JV out early I and mean, we took the bus out um, and we didn't watch the JV game, we didn't go in the Civic Center, uh, we didn't see our families before the game, we went from the bus to a small cramped locker room in the Civic Center and stayed in there until about 19 minutes on the clock and we finally came out. And I don't know if it was that we were just like cage animals at that point ready to go or just the, a fact that we tried something different after all those years. One of the biggest matchups came in 1992. Top ranked Calvin poised for a national title run, but Hope was talented and not to be taken lightly. We only had one loss, however many wins we had at that time and ranked number one in the country. It was. Yeah, it was a little scary, you know, to think, man, we, not only could this special season end, it could end to our rivals. And, uh, and so, you know, it was, it was probably the classic back and forth game that I was ever a part of. I still think Hope was the best team we played all year that year, and they likely could have gone all the way if they had gotten past us. The late 90s and early 2000s brought more talent to the floor and subsequently more classics. Both programs competing at a very high level. In 1997, a new coach, took control at Calvin. I gotta say, you know, when I first got the job here and I was getting interviewed by the by the free press, they said, do you know what you're getting into? And I'd been a part of rivalries as a player and a coach, and I said, yeah, I think it's pretty good. And, and when I got to the first game, I found out I had no idea <laughs> how big it really was. And I found out in a big hurry, we had to have hand signals for all our sets on offense because I couldn't communicate 10 feet away with the person who I was trying to talk to because it was just deafening in, in those arenas. I remember my first game at, at the Civic Center and how loud it was. I mean. Uh, cheers would be so loud you couldn't hear yourself uh, even think. Um, you know, I, I remember that coach would get mad at me because we were supposed to be in a 2-2-1 press and I would make a shot and it would be so loud I would forget to get in the press because I couldn't even think. You know, and so, um, and, he, and then I'd have to come out. But, you know, but it was really fun uh, to have that kind of energy and excitement and it just took it to a new level. My freshman year, we have to go play at Albion at Kresge. Uh, against Kelvin in the semifinals of the conference tournament. And it turns into, you know, Kresge's that tiny little shoebox gym and uh, it's packed and it's, it's riled up just like normal, but we're playing Kelvin, it goes to overtime. Uh, fortunately, we came out on top, but that was a huge win for us and just a great environment to play in off campus of Kelvin or Hope. There was always so much at stake every time we played Hope. The conference was at stake, who was gonna go to the national tournament was at stake, and uh, who was gonna have bragging rights for the next uh, uh, few months was always at stake. I can't know the road ahead, and I can't imagine all God has in store, but I can't wait for what's coming, because I'm ready. My heart is ready, and my mind is ready. I'm ready.
Cunningham Dahlman is a full-service law firm on the lakeshore. One of West Michigan's most respected law firms, Cunningham Dahlman traces its roots to the early 20th century. Cunningham Dahlman is large enough to meet your legal needs, but small enough to maintain a personal approach. Clients choose Cunningham Dahlman because our attorneys are approachable, professional, and experienced. If you have a legal question, we can help. Call 616-392-1821 or visit holland-law.com. The most honored high school sports show in Michigan history airs every week, Sunday at noon on ABC4. The State Champ Sports Network delivers the best highlights and insight of all West Michigan high school sports. State Champs, Sundays at noon on WOTV ABC4. Welcome back to State Champs Rivals, Calvin College versus Hope College. One of the best parts when talking about a rivalry is being able to say, I remember when. Last second shots, pivotal games, stinging defeats. When you have 186 games between two schools, there is no shortage of memorable moments. My most memorable Hope Calvin game uh, occurred while I was actually a student in the 64-65 uh, school year. And uh, I was being played at the Civic Center and it was a rocking place again and the game went into a double overtime. A Calvin player who was going for a loose ball uh, fouled a Hope player as time expired. And Don Cronemeyer, he was also a Holland Christian graduate, but he was an underclassman, or I think he was like a freshman or a sophomore at the time. Made two free throws with a few seconds left and, and uh, sewed up the game for us. The Hope student body uh, flooded the floor, lifted uh, uh, the Hope player on their shoulders and carried him off the floor. The referee said, no, no, bring him back because he's got another free throw to shoot. Even though the clock showed zero, he made the second free throw. I think the rules have changed now when the game is decided, that's it. Very, very, very exciting. I remember being in high school and watching the game where uh, I, think, I think Hope was, you know, one, two, three in the nation and then Lefebvre hits. <laughs> it's a jumper at the Civic Center um, to knock him off in the tournament. That's one of the best teams I've ever seen Hope have, either before I was there or since, um, with Eric Elliott and Wade Gugino and Kali Carlson and a lot of other guys who were really good players. So the play was designed, first option for Todd Hennink, our great three-point shooter at the time, to, to pop out and hopefully hit a three-pointer. They weren't going to let that happen. Uh, so the ball came back to me, but the three, they were guarding me tight, so I took a couple dribbles in and and hit a two. Uh, as we ran back to the huddle, all excited to talk strategy for overtime. Uh, Coach Dalma, I'm not sure he was too happy at first. He wanted the game to be over. Um, all those games, all those moments, um, I got that bitter taste in my mouth from, from losing in the Civic Center to Calvin in the NCAA tournament my senior year. You know, we at Hope would frequently talk about Calvin's long shot victories at the end. We, we, I don't know, we, I want to say fondly, we call them the Hennicks because they had a great, uh, a great player from the 90s, Todd Hennick, that uh, literally killed Hope from outside at the buzzer a couple times. I was heading home and I just said to him, I go, Todd, I said, I don't know why I feel this, but I said, I think you're going to hit a game-winning shot to win it tomorrow. And if you do, I'm going to be the first one to swarm the floor and give you a bear hug from behind. Todd catches the ball and he's beyond the volleyball line, about 25 feet out. And he's got a man in his face and fades away. I heard the, the yelling and screaming um, of joy from my dad and my mom, and I came running downstairs to see him. I rushed the floor, I bear hugged him, and within a millisecond, there's about 200 people swarming us. The embarrassing thing for me is that we had the white jerseys. I had all this maroon and gold face paint smeared all over the back of Todd's jersey. So he walks out of this crowd where he's almost been crushed, and uh, people thought he was bleeding because there was all of this red paint all over the back of his uh, jersey. My first uh, Calvin Hope game was at the Van Andel Arena as a freshman, and I was just, uh, just made it my way into the starting lineup. So not only is it the Calvin Hope rivalry, it is in front of the largest uh, crowd in Division III men's basketball history, over I think over 11,000. You kind of think, you know, for a college basketball game that's not Michigan State or Michigan, that are going to be able to draw that, but it was the novelty of it to be able to be part of that, uh, you know, that kind of event that was is going to be remembered forever. I mean, it's not something that's going to be equaled simply because, you know, that, that the size of the facility there. January 29, 1997, I still remember the date, and uh, I, I want to say by the end of December we had sold that game out without a, a public sale ticket. Usually the public sale will go on uh, the first week of January. So that was pretty amazing that we had sold the place out. It was overwhelming. At the time you wanted to pretend like 
I'm fine. But in reality, your heart is beating through your chest. Uh, you're seeing all your family, all your friends, all these people that you don't know, and yet you know from the very first moment they care about who wins this game. Hope won the game, of course, by 14 points. They'd probably point that one out, and certainly they played very well. But uh, just the fact that we were able to pack that place and there, that became such an event is something that'll never uh, go out of my mind for sure. Cunningham Dahlman is a full-service law firm on the lakeshore. One of West Michigan's most respected law firms, Cunningham Dahlman traces its roots to the early 20th century. Cunningham Dahlman is large enough to meet your legal needs, but small enough to maintain a personal approach. Clients choose Cunningham Dahlman because our attorneys are approachable, professional, and experienced. If you have a legal question, we can help. Call 616-392-1821 or visit holland-law.com. The Oaks Agency is a service-oriented, independent insurance agency. Not only do we quote multiple carriers for the best coverage and price, we welcome a face-to-face -face comparison to help you decide what coverage is best for you. No matter what your insurance needs, personal, commercial, or group health care, we're here to help you protect what's important to you. Oaks Agency, Inc., protecting what's important to you since 1903. The most honored high school sports show in Michigan history airs every week, Sunday at noon on ABC4. The State Champ Sports Network delivers the best highlights and insights of all West Michigan high school sports. State Champs, Sundays at noon on WOTV ABC4. Welcome again to State Champs Rivals. I'm Lauren Plant. We've had a chance to relive the history. How about this year's matchup? Preparing for a Calvin Hope game is no easy task. Distractions, fan pressure, it all has to be pushed aside because like it or not, this is the game that everyone will be talking about when it's all said and done. When we have a point guard like Ben Gardner and we have wings like Alex Edson and posts like Nate, I mean, it's we're a tough matchup. Hey, listen, you know the biggest thing about tomorrow is, is you keep your focus as to what this is about. It's about one game, it's a championship game, and that's 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 what it is. Nothing more, nothing less. You just got to play your hearts out for four minutes at a time. That's what it comes out. No matter who's on the floor, no matter what's going on, you just got to play hard for four minutes. And I, and I think that we're very capable of doing it. One of the things that is a concern for me a little bit is last year we had two senior playmakers. This year's team is different for us. We move the ball better, we play as a group, um, and so you rely on more people to step up and make plays, and we'll need to make some in that game. You've got to defend, you. you've got to rebound, right? And then you got to enjoy the moment and step up and make a play. Mm -hmm. Right? You gotta can't be afraid of the game. You gotta right? go right after it. So all of this X and O stuff, this is good, but the other things are way more important. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Being on spring break and stuff like that, like out of state, people will come up to you and recognize you and you won't have any idea and they'll be like, hey, that whole rivalry and knowing that people are watching all around the world is that's a pretty big deal. When you finally get to Calvin, you know that there's something special. Uh, that's going on. So when a coach like Ralph Hondard sits you down in a classroom before the game and says, hey guys, this is just like any other game, you know that's the biggest lie because everybody is primed for this game.
deep, deep, deep ball that goes for three. To Alex Edson now with 11 in the contest. some traffic. Home wants to shoot the deep ball if it can. That ball swatted out of bounds. Stay up, listen. When Edson's got it, he's knocking it in like that. You gotta stay up there. Keep working hard. That's good. This ball is tipped. A force triple. Go! Wow! What a shot by Edson. 15 and a half, and Hope will go to the locker room with a lead of 34 to 31. That's a nice dish inside, Van Arendach threw it down with authority. Because they're just going to sag, oh my goodness gracious, Edson from the heavens. Jordan Brink, this might be your time right here. Got to look from the top for three. Runs out the winner here today by the score of 71 to 63. I give Hope a lot of credit. They came out and got right after us and um, seemed to do the dictating and um, kind of were the aggressors and and uh, we were not. And um, you know they knocked in shots and did a really nice job. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a that was a terrific basketball game, like two great teams. And, uh, and we, we feel really fortunate to, to come out of here with a win. It's not a hate-hate rivalry. It's not, I'm not going to say it's a love-love rivalry, but it's a, it's a respect rivalry. It's a great uh, exhibit of what college basketball should be, I think. And that, so people who, are, who grew up with it, who are, for whatever reason, are affiliated with one of the schools in some way, uh, they understand that it's special and that it's uh, it's worth you know investing a little of your heart and soul in. Rivals is presented by Cunningham Dahlman. Let us help you, and we will earn your trust. Calvin College, minds in the making. The Bootsima, Sitsima, and Van Wingerden Group at Morgan Stanley. And the Oaks Agency Inc., serving the insurance needs of West Michigan families and businesses since 1903.